guys, so in this episode, we're actually going to start making something with 3.js in WebGL. So we're going to create a renderer, we're going to create a camera and a scene, and then add objects to that scene using materials and geometry. And then we're going to add some lights to our scene and animate it. So let's dive in. So the first thing we need to do is include the 3.js library. Then we're going to create a renderer, and this is which, what's actually going to draw everything onto our canvas element. So we'll specify a WebGL renderer. This is sort of the go-to renderer for 3.js. It also does have a canvas renderer for 2D canvas as well. So when you create a renderer, 3.js actually creates a canvas element which you can append to the body dynamically by calling append child renderer dot dom element and then you can go in and we can see our black canvas element being drawn in here i actually like to do it a little differently i like having my canvas in my document already so we can go ahead and add a canvas element here you can see it drawing red and then you just pass the canvas element as a parameter into your webgl renderer you can also pass other arguments like if you want anti-aliasing enabled which can make your renders look a lot cleaner you can do that here as well so we can also do other things on the renderer itself like set the clear color and this is sort of the default color that our rendered scene will render the background of our canvas element with you can also call set pixel ratio on the renderer which will use which you can use the device's pixel aspect ratio for rendering if you have a higher density display and we can also set the size of our renderer. So this will actually set the size of our canvas element within the document. So in order to draw content onto our renderer, we need to pass it two parameters. We need to pass it a camera and a scene. And this is going to tell it this perspective and view of which to draw all the content into our renderer. So let's create a camera and we're going to create a specific kind of camera. It's important to know that there are different kinds of cameras you can use. And this is going to be a perspective camera. So this is going to view things the way that you normally view them with perspective where things in the distance get smaller as they get further away. So this takes a number of parameters. The first one is the field of view. So we're going to set this to 35. And the aspect ratio. So here we're going to do the aspect ratio of our renderer. So the size of our window. So we'll do the width over height. And then we're going to set the near and far. And this is the point at which clipping occurs. So this is when things too close to you will no longer be rendered and when things um, too far away will no longer be rendered. Next, we're going to go ahead and create our scene. And this is basically the container object of our whole world where we're going to add things into. And then in order to draw everything, we simply call renderer, render, and then pass in our scene and our camera. So we can go ahead and test that and you can see we get this nice big green window that takes up the entire width of the browser. And that's because we don't actually have any objects inside of our scene. So our camera is just placed in our scene and rendering the scene with its default background color of the renderer, which is green in this case. So let's go ahead and add some content to our scene so we can actually see some stuff in it other than just green. What we need to do is we're ultimately going to create a mesh which takes two parameters. The first of those is the geometry and the second is material. So the geometry is the actual geometry that makes up the 3D object. So in this case we're just going to do a basic cube so we're going to use the three cube geometry and the first three parameters of this are each of the cube's sides. So we're going to create a 100 by 100 by 100 on the X, Y, and Z axis cube. You can also pass in three extra parameters which will define the number of faces on each of these sides of the cube. I should point out that in the documentation they don't have cube geometry anymore. It's called box geometry, but it does essentially the same thing. So the next thing we're going to do is create a material. 
there are a bunch of different types of materials and they all take different parameters depending on the type of material you're using. But we're just going to create a mesh basic material. So this is just going to draw solid colors on each of the sides of our cube. So then we can actually create our mesh and take our geometry and our material and pass those in as parameters. So now we can add our mesh to our scene. Because all of these items, our camera and our mesh, are by default added at the 0, 0, 0 position within our scene, you wouldn't actually see it because it's you're basically on top of it. The camera is on top of the mesh. So what we need to do is we need to set the Z position of our mesh to negative 1000 just so we can see it within our viewport. So if we take a look at it, you can see we now have what appears to be a square, which is actually our cube. We're just looking at it head on within the scene. So now in order to prove to you that it is actually a cube and not just a square, we're going to set up a render loop. So we're just going to call request animation frame that's going to subsequently call itself in a loop and then render inside of that loop. Then we're going to update the rotation of our cube on the x-axis. So here you can see it's actually moving. It's still kind of hard to see what's going on. Then if we update the y as well, you can see it's rotating on both axes. But it's still a little hard to see exactly that it's a cube, and this is because we don't have any shading applied to it. So the next thing we want to do is actually add some lights to our scene. It's important to realize that there are a bunch of different types of lights and they all affect your scene in different ways, especially depending on the different kinds of materials you're using in the scene as well. So first we're going to create an ambient light and this is the default lighting of our scene that sort of covers the entire space. And we're just going to create a white light. So the first parameter is the color and the second parameter is the intensity of that light. So we're gonna set it to 0.5. Then we need to add it to our scene. Now we're going to create another light, but this one's going to be a point light. So this works a little differently in that it works from a specific point within the scene, whereas the ambient light sort of floods the entire scene. And again, we're going to create a white light at half the intensity, and we just need to add that to our scene. Now, in order for our material to actually respond to this, we need to use a material that will respond to lights. So we're going to change this to be a Lambert material. And then we're going to set the color parameter to just a random color for our object. So now if we test this, you can see we now have a shaded cube rotating in our scene. And you can see it has the ambient light, which is sort of covering the dark and shaded parts of it and the point light which is shading the front face of it since our point light is actually at the same position as our camera. So that's it for my episode on setting up a basic scene in 3JS. I hope it kind of shows you how easy it is really to get started with this library and take something really complex like WebGL and simplifies it so really anyone can get set up building a 3D scene with 3JS. So in the next episodes, we're going to dive more specifically into things like materials and geometry and even get into shaders and how you can set up your own custom shader materials within 3JS. Thanks for watching.